stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But everyone, please remain standing. About to ask Reverend George Brown to please come and give us a prayer. Father God, we come once again thanking you for this gathering, thanking you for the city of Inkster, thanking you for the mayor and council, thank you for the people of this community. And Father, as we continue to pray together, bind us together with the love, unity, and strength as we move this city forward. Father, you say this could be the city of love, and we're going to keep that in, the, in our hearts at all times, that we are a love city as we come together in unity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Roll call. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mayor Nolan. Present. Councilwoman Wiley. Present. Present. <laughs> Councilman Oden. Present. Councilwoman Mitchell. Present. Councilwoman Howard. Councilwoman Howard. Oh, you're here. Okay, Mayor Pontin <laughs> Williams. Present. And Councilman Chisholm. Present. We have seven present tonight. We do have a quorum. All right. Everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? We added one item. We eliminated one item I and added one I item. Yep. And that's Abe Hatchin, land sale. No, that'll be I. I was here, but I'm saying the items that call the question vote. Oh, then we're going to add Oops. H I J. We're going to add a J, a closed session vote. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. Gardner. Yeah. Okay. All right. So with those are two additions and one deletion, uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda as it with the add-ons. Add support. Yeah. The properly moved supported. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It passes. Okay. Before we get to the presentations, we're going to have uh, Senator Betty Jean Alexander is here. Everybody give her applause. <laughs> it's good to have the senator in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. I would like to present this tribute for the Inkster Memorial Day Parade. Let it be known that in 1969, the Inkster Memorial Day Parade debuted. The Inkster Memorial Parade is touted as the third oldest parade in the state, starting at Cherry Hill Park and traveling south on Inkster Road to Colonial Park, where a, where a memorial program was held, honoring those members of the Inkster community whose lives were lost in various wars. The Inkster Memorial Parade originated out of the need and desire to celebrate those who valiantly served by honoring their names and acknowledging their sacrifice. The Inkster Memorial Day Parade has always enjoyed the support of the community, community as well as state, county, and local officials participating in the program. In special tribute, this document is signed and dedicated to honor the 50th annual Inkster Memorial Day Parade. Yeah. Yes, we're going to keep rolling. Okay, not yet. Joel Jones, do we have anybody from Representative Joel Jones' office? And then we'll Mary. 
In the absence of the state representative, he is serving with the National Guard right now. I am going to give a legislative update to you guys. <laughs> uh, let's see, here we go. So general info, June is National Home Ownership Month. Home ownership continues to be an important way for people to invest in their communities, build wealth, and achieve the American dream. Since its creation in 1934, the FHA, Federal Housing Administration, has helped more than 46 million Americans purchase or refinance their homes. Last year, FHA insured more than 1.2 million home loans, totaling $245 billion. An estimated 40% of all first-time home buyers use FHA. 47% of home purchases by African-American households are FHA-insured borrowers. Nearly half of Hispanic home buyers rely upon an FHA-insured mortgage to purchase their home. June is a time to reflect upon the impact of owning a home to gain household wealth, neighborhood stability, and the nation's broader economic and to grow the nation's broader economic health. There are a list of house bills dealing with driving, um, segment two, and everything, and driver's education. I also would like to leave you with the representative's phone number in the event that you all do have any questions that may arise. 517-373-0849. Again, that is 517-373-0849 for the Office of State Representative Joel Jones, House 11 District, House District 11. Thank you. I'm sorry, and if anyone has any questions, just please relay them to me, and I'll get those questions over to him for an answer. Yeah, yeah we will. Okay. We know it. Okay, we're going to have next have Mary McClendon from Wayne County Commissioner Glenn Anderson's office. Good evening, Mayor and Council, to the CFO, to the clerk, and to all the dignitaries and the fine citizens of Inkster. I bring you greetings from the office of Wayne County Commissioner Glenn Anderson. And I want you to know that I do have Wayne County Parks schedules with me. Uh, it's the park system is celebrating 100 years. So with that, there's so many activities to uh, celebrate the 100 years. You want to make sure that you get a schedule. Sometimes we don't have things to do, but yet there's a lot to be done. A lot of it's free or a nominal fee, and it's really, really nice. So you want to make sure that you have a schedule so you'll be able to join the Wayne County activities in all of the Wayne County parks. Uh, and I have uh, several copies with me today. Also, uh, coming up real soon is the Wayne County Senior Services Department Senior Fun Fest. And that's this weekend, June the 22nd, from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. And it's at the Nankin Mills Park, which is right across from Nankin Mills Interpretive Center. And the, and the Interpretive Center is at 33175 and Arbor Trail in the city of Westland. Now, if you want to be a part of this, and we know that Inkster is a senior-friendly community, if you want to be a part of this uh, fun fest, you can get tickets by calling Senior Services at 734-326-5282. Senior Services at 734-326-5282. You have to have tickets to uh, join in the fun, and these tickets are free, so you have just a few days left, so that's the 22nd, which is coming up real soon, and there's all so many activities in the park schedule, and you can be a part of those activities. Uh, the commissioner has his newsletter out now, and this is a copy of his newsletter. Uh, hopefully you have yours in the mail. Um, you should have it about now, so be sure to check for your actual copy of the commissioner's uh, newsletter. Uh, also, uh, the commissioner, this is a busy time for him, and he's always busy, but this is the time that they start gearing up for budget preparation, and this will be the budget for 2019-2020, and that sounds funny, 2020 is coming up fast, and they'll be preparing uh, that budget. 
One of the things that the commissioner is hoping for, that they'll be in the administrative budget, which is not the commission budget, budget but that's the administrative budget, that there would be funding to help with the roads. We understand that the roads are not good, the Wayne County roads, nor the bridges. They can use improvement as well. So one of the things that he's hoping for, that there will be improvement in those two areas. And he'll be working diligently to uh, plan for that additional funding in those areas because he is a part of the Ways and Means Committee. And that's all that I have today. You have a large group here today, and I don't want to take a long time. You know, I can't talk, Mayor. You know that. <laughs> yes, yes, but yes. I will end. It. Why you didn't have to? <laughs> you didn't have to aid me and me on that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to go to our B presentation. Uh, certificates to Memorial Day Parade sponsors and participants. Councilwoman Sandra Watley. <laughs> Steve, go help. Mm. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How things are doing today? That's good. I'm so glad to hear it. Before we get started, I would like you all to know that over on the windowsill is a series of books from the past four years of the parade. From, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to stop taking an individual book and take a stack of books, okay? And uh, Jatan can show you right there. There's uh, the 47th, 48th, 49th, and 50th, plus a photo album. Those are for you. They're the city's gift to you, okay? Now, before we get started with the presentation, I'm going to let y'all know. I expect you all to show up, okay? So I appreciate that. But the 50th Memorial Day Parade has been dedicated to Patricia Williams. We are dedicating our 50th Memorial Day Parade to Patricia Williams. Dorsey, can you come up? Okay. Now, oh, I need that? Y'all think I need that? Really, y'all think I need? Okay, well, what we did is we did a special edition booklet in honor of Patricia Williams. Now, those books over there are the regular ones from the parade, but we did a special edition to honor Patricia Williams, and we'd like to give this to Dorsey now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank the city so much. We uh, yeah. love you and Pat, and uh, we want to always remember. Okay? Do you have anything you want to say? Well, hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold well, we'll on. Memorial Day Parade booklet. Um, I need a 50th Memorial Day Parade booklet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. And we'd like to call them all up at the same time. So we have Michael Love. Michael, can you come up? I don't know if you all recognize Michael or not, but Michael is the young man who received over three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, it's yeah. up to six. All right. In scholarship. Wow, that's great. Cool, and he's been featured on CNN. He's been featured on a number of programs, and he was featured on our Achieve the World float this year in the Memorial Day Parade. All right. So, can you find Michael? Yes. So we'd like to give Michael his, and we have a special edition booklet for you also. Next, we'd like to call up Darian Belcher. <laughs> Darian Belcher is a young man who we've adopted in the city of Inkster. He's our own author. Darian wrote his first book when he was six. He has now wrote his second book, and he's what, 10 now? And yes. Yeah, because I always, <laughs> I always used to say he was nine years old, and he'd correct me right away. I'm 10, <laughs> OK? So we would like to give Darian his book and his certificate. OK, I don't see our third person here, Kayla. Kalila Smith? Yeah, she's not here. But we do have a very special guest in the house, Mr. Ernest Thomas. <laughs> Was the veteran featured in the booklet who came home from Vietnam and wanted a parade? or expected a parade, but instead they threw feces at him. So we decided this year that we would give Mr. Thomas his parade. to say thank you. You must be a part of that grateful nation I heard so much about. I will go back to Vietnam for you. There are those who are missing in action and unaccounted for. Oh, or send us back. So again, my name is Michael Love. Um, I was a student from Cornerstone Health Technology High School that um, got 40, over 40 college sepsis and over $600,000 in scholarships. And um, uh, the past couple months, I've been on several different radio stations, different TV stations, and um, I just, I'm blessed. And I'm so blessed to be in uh, the Insta Parade. This is probably the first time I've ever been in a parade. <laughs> and, um, well, everybody want, probably want to know, I'm going to Harris Stowe State University in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. And before I head out, I'm um, publishing my own book. It's going to be, um, it's titled Leap, and it'll be talking about how, you, just how to overcome your academic struggles. People tell you that you can't do something, and you're trying, that people are trying to label you as a, a statistic. So my book will be coming out in the next few weeks, and I'll make sure I let the city of Inkster tell the city when its uh, re reveal party will be. OK, so my name is Darian Belcher, Jr. And before I go, I'd like to leave you guys with some words of encouragement. <coughs> okay. 
refrain from idle talk. The verse preceding this text says, for whatever's in your heart determines what you say. Your speech mirrors the condition of your heart. Your heart represents your innermost thoughts, health, and desires. If your heart is filled with bitterness, your speech will be tainted by it. But if it is filled with the love of God, your words will also express that love. If we take seriously Jesus' warning about being held accountable for our idle words, that we should not only weigh our words, but we should examine our hearts, the source of our speech. Here's a good rule to apply before we speak. Think. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? Think. If the content of what you want to say doesn't pass this test, then you really do not need to say it. Otherwise, you will be held accountable for your words. Thank you guys so very much. I appreciate you all. Okay. Thank you. Out of the mouths of babes. Could we have the Buscelli group come up, please? about the experience. So it was a great experience for them and they look forward to being in it again. Thank you.
What's going on? Look at me. All right, next, while we are packing up, we're going to have our last presentation is about Camp Inspire from Gene Overman, pa Pastor Gene Overman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and my council. So I'm going to show our commercial real quick. Give us a second to wrap up what we're doing. So, Troy, if you can put it on for me. Um, the commercial is about Operation Refuge and our entire programming, so I want us to get an opportunity to see that. I have a few bullets that I want to share today with the city of Inkster. So, Troy, should I start or are you going to be okay? Keep rolling? Okay. I'll stop when that comes. I really want to share some information about Operation Refuge and what we're doing. And I think it's just a perfect day to share this information because we all saw the two amazing young men that was here earlier. I'm extremely excited for his parents and the fact that they will not have to pay for college. Right? That is huge for those of us that are paying for college. So Operation Refuge, a big part of the work we do is in the educational sphere. I, I talk to a lot of people, and they seem to know about us, but in my community, we're not as versed as people as to what we're doing. So I want to share some things today. Um, some of the things I don't know if we're aware or not, but Operation Refuge, and a lot of you think of it as Mother's Pantry or Camp Inspire, we are recognized nationally with congressional recognition from Congresswoman Debbie Dingell for our continued support for services in the Michigan communities. We too have state recognition from Senator Betty Jean for our work in STEAM. The city, our mayor did give us a proclamation regarding the work in the city. And one of our health care bills from one of the Camp Inspire students was presented to Congress by uh, Rashida Tlaib, who is our honorary chair. So this was actually at the mayor's luncheon. So you can go ahead and play it. It's only 30 seconds. That means you. Our major volunteer supporters there.
notice donate was in there. So I know you probably have seen that on BET and other places, but I want to share it here. Some of the things that we've been leading and change is Operation Refuge Mother's Pantry was one of the first client choice food pantries in Wayne County honored by Gleaners and Forgotten Harvest. We're also one of the leaders for the Inkster Health Initiative with the National Kidney Foundation when it was founded. We're Inkster's first nonprofit providing college access to summer STEM program with many of the surrounding community colleges, including but not limited to Schoolcraft, Henry Ford, WC3, MIAT, and surrounding colleges. Um, we are receiving tech support from Harvard mm -hmm. School of Medicine and Equal Measures, the Pear Institute as a result of being a grantee from Ralph C. Wilson Foundation. So one of the things that I want our city to be aware of is that we acquired a facility next door on this side of the church now that we're looking forward to having as a STEAM cafe. Yeah. So what is a STEAM cafe, Gene? It is all things STEAM or STEM. We have STEAM because we have the A in there for the arts. So I really want us to be aware of some of the collaborative partnerships that we have at Operation Refuge. And I want us to really embrace this. I was at DWO with um, Michael Eric Dyson and Bankale and all of them last Saturday, and they said any community that plans to move forward understand what STEM should look like in an ecosystem in your community. So I'm reaching out to the city of Inkster with this information that we began to look at opportunities so that these young men aren't somewhere else, because those were not our residents. We want our residents moving at that level, right? We are very excited for all young men to do well, young men of color in particular, young men of color that live in Inkster, most importantly. So I want us to begin to look at ways to really do this, to partner together. We have tons of partners, as you saw the AKAs and others up there, and it's just so many, National Christians in Action, uh, Progressive Realty helped us with the building. Not only did they support us in getting it, they gave us $10,000 towards the purchase. So when you get partners like that, these are the kind of things that we want, nonprofits, for-profits, city government, universities, everyone understanding the power of reinvestment. Michigan Works have been employing young people, helping us work with them through Operation Refuge for the last six years. These are the things I want to share with us so that when you hear other people talk about Operation Refuge, you will know what we're doing. So thank you so much. I promised Felicia I would not get up here and preach, <laughs> although I brought my bottle of water. And like most pastors with the mic, I'm all ready for an amen. <laughs> I want you to really think about it, go on our website, look, figure out ways that we can really make this happen for our young people. Again, we're registering for camp, fifth through 12th grade. You can do it online at www.operationrefuge.org. Any questions, most people know where I am, at the pantry or the church. Thank you so much. Now we're going to have our next last presentation. <laughs> it's, it's called a D. <laughs> right. All pro um, case management. We have a presentation from Jason Dixon. I'm going to keep it quick. <laughs> How you guys doing? Let me see. Can I uh, get to the Okay. So you guys know in um, August of last year, we put a presentation together for the community for solar and for fiber. So um, one of the things, a few of the things that I said that I will bring to you guys was um, two banks. No, actually, I said a, a financial institution. So instead of us having one, we actually got two banks. So and throughout the, the presentation to bring the solar and the fiber, I wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to give the community an upgrade. So we I don't know how many people but, uh, have participated, but we've had a couple of financial literacy uh, workshops where um, we've partnered with the banks to make sure that people got some homes with a, a good credit score of 580. 
and that's pretty much unheard of in Southeast Michigan. So we got them to work with Inkster with the 580 credit score because we gave them a holistic uh, project to bring the city to the 21st century. So we talked about the solar um, and we talked about the fiber. So let me give you guys an update. Um, as of, uh, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, um, we had an opportunity to get together with um, the two banks, uh, Mishta and Ford Motor Company. Um, and part of the um, opportunity to help pay for this uh, mega project in Inkster was they said, well, um, we have to have some additional ways to pay for this opportunity. So we talked to Ford, and I don't know if everyone here knows, you know, you guys have a lot of history with Ford Motor Company and Inkster, right? So can I get amen? amen? So I wanted to make sure that nobody forgets about Inkster. Can I get amen? amen? So I resurrected some of that history. So in resurrecting the history, it looked like it created an opportunity. So we looked at how could we uh, solve some problems in Inkster. Inkster, Michigan, so we made an Inkster, Michigan Smart Green kiosk project. So we can bring some other people together to reduce the digital divide. So that's kind of where this all started. You guys know what the digital divide is? Absolutely. Okay, so we talked to um, the two banks, we talked to Mishta, and we talked to Ford, uh, Keith Cooper, the global supply chain manager, he's actually was in the meeting with us to um, support the initiative. Um, and we look, you see the kiosk right there? So we're looking to put six of those in Inkster. We just don't know exactly where we want to put them. <laughs> we picked out some locations. Um, we looked at City Hall, the rec center, two, um, two, go, two, two the golf course, and the two parks. The two park, two parks. What's the two parks name? Wheatley and Westwood. Wheatley and Westwood. And then I started thinking about maybe that maybe in front of the housing commission might need one. But part of this process to we have to have a community involvement, right? So uh, one of the things to talk about this process um, is we want to have a, a community um, sit down, a little powwow, so we can ask the community what they think. What do they think they want to have on the kiosk? The only thing that I know that I'm required to have on this kiosk right now is the education um, from the Ford, um, the Ford family's um, commitment to Inkster back in the day until, to, until now. So we have to tell that history. That's the only thing I'm really mandated that I have to put on here. But then I want to, do, I want to get creative. So maybe every year, whoever the oldest person in Inkster is that has a story that can be on that kiosk. Maybe there's some other history that we don't know about. So what does this kiosk do? The kiosk is Wi-Fi accessible up to 150 feet. It can be used to, it can use to go to your uh, police, fire, and safety with a 911, 411, 611, whatever you want to call it. We can have that done. Um, also has a camera for safety. So now if something happens in that community, in that park, or wherever that location is, it can uh, record that information. Um, the next thing we got to figure out, is there any th other things that we want to put on it? I'm just looking at the basic things that we can give to the community and if there's some additional things that we can do. So my, one of my thoughts was, you know, since we got two banks that want to do business here, why not make it some kind of banking transaction you can do? I didn't throw that out there to them because I'm not at that, at that point. I have to ask the community, right? So that's what I'm here for today. Now, does it cost the city any money? No, it won't cost the city any money. That's my job.